Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining. So as you can see I'm outdoors today and I am creating different kinds of outdoor games that you can play with your kids or adults, doesn't matter. For all of these games I'm trying to use very minimal supplies, very like supplies that you should already have in your home hopefully, so that it's very easy and it's something you can do for the weekend, pretty much any weekend that you decide to. And this is also great pretty much for any time that there's no snow so it doesn't need to be in the summer it can be in the spring or fall time and at the end of this video i'm going to showcase other diy games that i didn't do but i think are very easy to do but for now let's go so the first diy that i want to do is outdoor game mat Please excuse my shaking camera over there, I'm doing everything outdoors and occasionally you can even see the flies coming over. Anyhow, the first thing I'm doing is I'm creating this grid for the tic-tac-toe. This will be the first portion of this game mat. Over here I simply use tape and when I untaped it I have these kind of cool squares in the middle when the, when the lines intersect and I really liked it so I kept that. Over here I had shells and on the shells I wrote 5 zeros and 5 x's with paint, acrylic paint. And here they all are finished. For the second portion of this mat, I wanted to create the chess or checkered board. So over here with the potato, I'm creating a very simple kind of like inch by inch square stamp. So that everything is aligning, I'm again using masking tape and I am using again the same acrylic paint. At first, I'm just roughly trying to visualize where will the squares go. So over here, I'm kind of spacing it out and you need four squares that are black by four squares that are black in the checkered pattern, of course. Use the masking tape because that creates kind of the structure and makes everything line up. And to make it nice and solid, I went over with another layer of acrylic. Not my finest job, and because it's on a fabric, everything kind of, you know, spilled. <laughs> but it still works and it does the job. So over here for the third portion of this mat, I'm still using the same stamp, except that I'm cutting out the inside so that we have kind of like the square of it and not so much the inside of it. Here it is complete. So here's my amazing plan on a little piece of paper over there. And uh, the idea over here is just a very simple classic board game. And you need the little kind of slots for that. The way you do this is completely up to you. You will see what I did. You can do your own thing. Again, using tape as the guide because that aligns everything nicely. So here is my kind of overall idea over there at the bottom we have the start the little arrows over there that's when if you step on it you get to take either forward or backwards and little plus three and minus four and minus six those are the amount of steps you go forward if you or backwards if you hit that square of course you need the dice for this or three or two or four little um kind of rocks of depending on how many people are playing and you can definitely have a really fun game on the beach so here I am staging it on the actual beach and it looks so adorable and so cute and I'm absolutely in love with this project. I hope you try this yourself. Now on to the second DIY. This is very simple, but I still wanted to show you. This is the ring toss with bottles that you have, preferably glass bottles, because they have like a nice narrow opening at the, at the top. I had leftover paint, wall paint, and I needed to do with the spongy two layers because the first layer was not enough. I really like the different height because I had four of the same height bottles and then I had one that's taller. You can also assign like different numbers. You can even write numbers on these and assign different points for each of the bottles. For the actual ring, I had this McDonald's lid that I cut out the inside, leaving the actual outside ring. With the string that I had, I super glued it around kind of like went around and super glued everything together but then i quickly realized that super glue does not bond well with either the string that i had or the plastic i'm not sure but it wasn't happening so i just took the scotch tape and i taped everything which totally worked and even looked 
pretty nice. <laughs> For the bottles, once they are dry, I just went over with the sandpaper to make it a little more, you know, vintagey, cool looking. I thought it just added a little bit to this. So here's the final result. I love the vintage texture I added and I put them in a really cool, vintagey looking basket. Surprisingly, it was pretty hard to get the ring onto the bottle, but it was a lot of fun to play. So for the next DIY, I have bought these letters a while back. To be honest, I didn't really have a reason for them. I just knew I'm going to be using them for something. And with super glue, I'm gluing them together. It doesn't matter what letters I'm using at this point. I'm just trying to make the signs. Spraying everything with my amazing bright neon spray paint. Here are all of them. I needed six, I believe, maybe seven, depending on how many points and how many uh, steps does your ladder have because this will go onto a ladder And here are all of the numbers that I'm going to be using Over here, I'm essentially making a bean bag out of this uh, safety vest that I had Stitching it really roughly. I'm just kind of using back and forth stitch and filling inside with rocks. If you have beans or rice, that will work just as well. After you put all of the rocks inside, close it up. I try to do the invisible kind of stitch, almost like inside over there, so when you tighten the string, it becomes nice and invisible. So here are all of my items prepared. Now let's go outside and I have the ladder over here. I think it has about seven steps, which is perfect. It can have less. It's okay if you have a shorter ladder. And I have attached, basically taped the signs to the back of the sign to the actual steps. And the rating that I chose is that you have the easy one, the number 10, kind of in the middle, because I figure that's the easiest one to hit, right? I was so wrong because this was one of the hardest things. I could not get it to stay on there. I don't know why. Oh, over there it almost got on there, but then it fell again. <laughs> and that step didn't even have the points. So I called my boyfriend to help out. And of course, on the first try, he got it. <laughs> but then later on when he tried again, it was harder, but he still kind of figured out the way. So what he was doing, he was kind of flipping it backwards when it does a, a little bit of a loop in the air it sticks much nicer. Now on to the DIY number four. So I had this sheet of fabric and I had the string. So for the corners, I have made little holes in them and I needed the two trees nearby so that I could tie all four corners to different branches of the trees, which is what I'm doing over here. Try to make your fabric sheet nice and tight so that we have a good kind of flat surface because now I'm going to be cutting it and try to have as little folds in the fabric as possible. Now that I have the fabric nice and straight and tight, now I'm going to start cutting. So in the middle, that's the hardest one. I'm going to make them the smallest and they can be, I'm doing squares, I'm doing the triangles, I'm doing an oval over there. Um, it's really up to you. So of course, the larger the hole, the easier it is to hit through it. As I had my spray paint over here, I'm spray painting the corners so that it's a bit easier to see. And I'm assigning, of course, the points system. So 100 points for the smallest one and then 50 and 30 and 10. You can do your own thing. Over here, I have a golf ball. Again, you can use any ball you have and trying to hit it. Of course, the further you are, the harder it becomes and the closer you are, the easier it becomes. 
I got 100 points on my third try, so this was fairly easy. And that concludes my own DIYs for you guys, but I still wanted to show you things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have time. So over here, this corn hole, you can do it out of a canvas. I'm gonna link everything down below. A really cute flamingo ring toss you can probably make out of dollar store items. How cute is this domino out of just plain rocks and acrylic paint? This pool noodle frisbee target and you can throw anything balls or anything through it. Another cool ball toss game with just pots. Maybe a watermelon piñata that's much harder to do but still amazingly fun. So I hope you enjoyed all of these DIYs. Please subscribe, like and share this channel if you enjoy my work and have fun and enjoyable weekends. Thank you. Bye.